Hey everybody, this is Josh here from Wolf Technologies. Um, I just wanted to show you what I've been working on with the Haller Config program and how it interfaces to the Haller Arcade Controller. So when you first start the program, it basically goes out and checks to see how many Hallers are connected. So I only have one connected right now, so it says it found one. If you find more than one, it will basically have numbers one to four, because you can have up to four controllers connected at the same time down here, and you'd be able to cycle between them. And as you cycle between them, it will basically graphically show what the configuration of the particular controller is. Right now, it sh also shows you the firmware version. Right now, it's just at 0.104, but it'll be 1.0 when it's released. So anyway, in this program here, you it basically allows you to set all the controls of your Haller arcade controller. By default, the joystick 1, joystick 3, and buttons 1 to 3, as well as accelerometer, are all mapped to the joystick 1. And as you can see, J1 is mapped, the up and down is mapped to the Y axis, the left and right is mapped to the X axis, J3 is mapped to the Z axis, and the throttle. And then the buttons are all mapped to joystick buttons 1 to 13 on the joystick 1, which is represented by the blue color. And you'll see that the red color, which represents joystick 2, is J2, J4, and buttons 14 to 26. So this is the default setting for the Howler controller. So let's say you want to go in here and change one of these inputs to keyboard. So click on button 5. So once you click it, it shows you what it is. So let's change it to keyboard button, key code, um, let's change it to H. And you can also change the modifier. So say you want, like right now, if you set it to that it will be a lowercase h but you can set it so it will shift shift h which would be a capital h you can set it so a control h alt h you can also set it for a windows key you could also set the modifier by itself so if you wanted to set it to shift you could set it to shift and then set the key code to none and then when you press that button it would only press the shift button which would be useful in, in dos games such as epic pinball where if you want to just push the flippers but for now let's just set it as h set control as you'll see, the graphic representation shows a uh, keyboard press H. Now, the accelerometers right now are analog, which is represented by the A. So analog X rotation, Y rotation, and Z rotation based on the axis. So for the X axis, let's click it. So it's set up for joystick analog X rotation. Let's make it a mouse button press. So left mouse button. And then you can actually set the trigger min and max. So trigger min and max are basically the range that the accelerometer reads so once it get, goes in that range it will trigger left mouse button press so let's set control as you can see the left mouse button will be pressed if the accelerometer goes between 100 and 125 so pretty much you can do any control it can be almost anything and the program is set up so that the controls are only mapped how they can be mapped for example, on J3, you can actually set it up as a, um, a mouse and Z axis and what and Y axis and X axis. So basically, what that means is you can set it up as a mouse input for the optical encoders, so that, which is useful for the trackball and spinner. So if you choose mouse X axis and set the control, it basically set like these two pins. Uh, J3L and J3R are used for, as inputs from the optical encoder. So now, as you can see, it's set up to be the most x-axis. So if you had your uh, optical encoder, which is your trackball set up, and that axis was mapped, then it would be now your most x-axis. So that's a quick walkthrough of the control section. And uh, we can also set it back to the factory default. So you just go set to defaults. And sure, let's set them. So then it sets everything back to the factory default. So now everything's back to normal again, in case you change something that you didn't want. Now, if we go into the LEDs tab, it basically, as soon as you click it, it scans what the LEDs are outputting right now and provides a graphical representation of that. So let's say we want to change button 25 RGB LED. So right now it's set all to white. So let's say we want to make it yellow. So in order to get yellow, we, I think you do 100% red and 100% green. So let's put blue to zero and set LED. As you can see, now it graphically shows that it's yellow. And if you had your Haller controller in front of you, you could see that it would be set to yellow right now. 
So in addition to this graphical representation of stuff, I'm also going to have the ability to import script files. So you can import a script file that will basically have all the buttons, or all, sorry, all the LEDs represented in there, so it's a much quicker way. And you could download other people's color schemes as well if you wanted to and import that in there. And I'm also going to have the same thing for the controls, so you can easily and quickly import uh, script files that other people have created or if you've created your own different configurations for different consoles that you have. So for example you can set so every single thing on here is a keyboard key press, different joystick configuration, different like mouse button configurations, whatever you'd like. So that's just a quick little overview of the Howler config program and if anybody has any questions or anything feel free to send me an email. Alright, thank you.